This is the Lazy Women Podcast. Hello, ladies. We hope you are having a nice and relaxing time laying on the sofa, snuggled in a warm, fluffy blanket, with a plate of Christmas sweets always within reach, surrounded by your loved ones, and with love actually streaming on repeat, because we are. <laughs> As a Christmas gift from our podcasting team, we are bringing you a little sneak peek from our first ever podcast episode, which is coming out in January. It is a short folk tale narrated by Cenge Virak, a Hungarian storyteller and folk tale collector. We are hoping that her smart heroines will serve as a nice counterpoint to the streams of gender stereotypical Christmas TV and be an inspiration for the year ahead. We are wishing you all lazy and slow holidays and we'll be looking forward to seeing you next year. Okay, so the the story that I wanted to tell today is one of my favorite Hungarian folk tales. It's actually an interesting cultural mix, this story, because it comes from a storyteller called Pajuk Anna, and she was Transcarpathian. She was Rusin, which is a Slavic ethnicity, but she married into a Hungarian family, and then she told her stories in Hungarian. And her folk tales are a mix of Hungarian folk tales and her own heritage. She was born in 1853, so she lived to almost be 100 years old, and a lot of her tales were collected. And I published an entire collection of her stories in English, which I loved translating and I love telling. So this is, this is one of my favorites. Once upon a time, there was a king. And this king had three daughters and his three daughters were all amazing and he loved them equally but the three princesses did not have the same mother the first princess the oldest princess was born from the king's first marriage to a fairy woman this fairy queen was wise and beautiful and the king loved her very much but time came when the fairies left our world because people changed and people were mean and greedy and the fairy queen decided to take her people and move somewhere else. Some say they moved up to the sky or to a faraway land, but she left her husband and her daughter behind. So the king got married again. This time he married a wise woman and they also had a daughter, the second princess. And the wise woman was good to everyone. She had good advice. She helped people. She healed people. She knew the secrets of the forests and the plants and the herbs, but people started gossiping about her. People started saying that she was a witch. And she was wise enough to know that it would be, it would be dangerous to her daughter if she stayed. So she left too. And the king stayed behind with the two baby girls. And the third time he got married, he didn't marry a fairy. He didn't marry a wise woman. He just married an ordinary woman. But he loved her very much too. And they had a daughter, the third princess. The king loved his daughters equally. He loved them so much that he had a ring made for himself with three stones in the ring for the eyes of the three princesses. The beautiful green eyes of the fairy princess and the beautiful blue eyes of the wise woman's daughter and the beautiful black eyes of the youngest princess. And he always wore that ring so that it would remind him of his daughters. Well, one day the king went walking. He went walking to the palace gardens and he found a well in a forgotten corner of the gardens, a well that he didn't even remember being there. And he looked at the well and he looked inside and he was wondering if there is still water in it, if he could have it cleaned or, you know, restored. But as he was leaning over the edge of the well, the ring slipped from his finger and fell into the well. 
The king was devastated. His greatest treasure, his favorite ring. He ordered his people to go down into the well and find the ring. And the servants came with ropes and lights and ladders and they tried to go, but they couldn't even find the bottom of the well, let alone the ring. So the king announced in his kingdom that whoever can bring back his favorite ring from the well can wish for whatever they want. And those are dangerous words from a king. But people came and they climbed down into the well and they searched and they searched, but nobody could find the bottom of the well. Nobody could find the ring. Some people didn't even come back. Well, one day the king was standing by the well waiting for someone to come and fetch the ring, when suddenly there was a stranger out of nowhere standing next to him. He was tall and handsome and smartly dressed. He looked rich and he said, Your Majesty, I can bring back your ring if you give me one of your daughters in marriage. And the king said, Yes, of course. See, he was so preoccupied about the ring that he wasn't even thinking of his daughters. And the stranger said, oh, well, then. it's very dangerous to go out into that well. Um, before I go, tell your daughter to come and give me a kiss for good luck. And the king said, yeah, yeah, whatever. And he yelled for his daughter, Yulishka, come down here. And Yulishka, the oldest princess, came down from the tower from where, where her room was. She stepped out of the palace, and the moment she saw the stranger in the garden, she stopped and she screamed, Father, what is that man doing in our garden? Come over here. He's going to return my ring from the well. Give him a kiss for good luck. I'm not kissing that man. That man is the devil. How do you know that? Father, did you forget that my mother was a fairy queen? I can see into the heart of people, and that man's heart is evil. I'm not kissing him. And she turned around, and she went back into the palace. And the stranger looked at the king, and he said, Well, I'll have your second daughter. Marishka, yerele! Marishka, the second princess, comes down from the tower, steps out of the palace, and she immediately stops and screams, Father, what is that man doing in the garden? Well, he's going to return my ring. Come and give him a kiss for good luck. I'm not kissing that man. That man is the devil. How do you know? Well, father, my mother was a wise woman. I know what brimstone smells like. Can't you smell that? It's sinking up the entire garden. Well, the king could smell the brimstone, but he said, I don't care. I want that ring. And she said, well, I am not kissing him. And she turned around and she went back into the palace. Well said the stranger, I'll take your youngest daughter. Anitza, get it up. Anitza, the youngest princess, comes down from the tower, steps out of the palace, and remember that Anitza's mother was just an ordinary woman. She was not a fairy, she was not a wise woman. And Anitza was also a little bit short-sighted. She steps out of the palace, and she also stops immediately, and she says, Father, what is the devil doing in our garden? And the king said, How can you possibly tell that it's the devil? And she said, Father, he has hooves. And the king looked. And indeed, he had hooves. But at that point, the king wanted his ring back so much that he said, I don't care. Come and give him a kiss. And she said, no, if you want that ring so much, then you kiss the devil. And she turned around and she went back in the palace. And the king looked at the stranger. And the stranger looked at the king. And the king wanted his ring back so much that he gave the devil a kiss. And the devil jumped into the well, and the next moment he jumped out of the well, and he was holding the ring, and he says, Your majesty, you promised that I can wish for whatever I want. I want your youngest daughter as my wife. Well, the king took the ring, and he went up to the tower to talk to his daughter. And by the time he climbed up to the tower, by the time he stepped through the door in the princess's room, there was a coffin. And the youngest princess was lying in the coffin saying, Father, if I have to marry the devil, I would rather die. He didn't even know where she got the coffin in that short amount of time, but she was very dramatic. And the other princess, the oldest one, says, Father, how can you? How can you promise one of us to the devil? You had that ring made to remember how much you love us, and now you want to give one of us away? 
Yes, says the second princess. And by the way, that's not the real ring. What do you mean? And the king looked at the ring and she said, look, it has the three stones, but not in the right order. And the king realized that she was right. And he was ashamed of himself. And he threw the ring out the window. And then he had a long conversation with his daughters. And there was some yelling and there was some crying and there was a lot of apologies. Meanwhile, the guards at the tower were, you know, not, they didn't want to listen to the family conversation. So they were outside in the garden, you know, being bored. And one of the young guards um, went looking around the garden and he found a big frog. Now, frogs in those days were, were a delicacy, you know, people would eat them. So he took the frog to the kitchens and asked the cook to prepare it for him. And as the cook cut the frog open, what would fall out of the frog's stomach if not the real ring of the king? So the soldier, the guard, picks up the ring. He runs up to the tower. He bursts through the door of the room and he says, Your Majesty, I have your ring. Well, the youngest princess sitting in the coffin, saw this young guard and she smiled and she waved at him. And the young guard also smiled and waved at the princess. And the king could see that this was not the first time they were smiling at each other. And he said, well, my son, you return my ring. Would you like to marry my daughter if she wants you as a husband? Now he was learning his lesson. And he said, well, yes, of course, your majesty. I love your daughter, but I'm just a soldier. How can I marry a princess? Well, I can make you a prince. I can give you some land, you know, a castle, and then you can marry my daughter. Does that sound fair? Everybody was happy with that. The princess was happy. The young man was happy. They immediately had a wedding and a big celebration. But in the middle of the wedding dances and the music and the feast, who would walk through the door but the devil? Because the devil had been waiting by the well all this time for his bride. And then he heard the music and he thought that they were preparing for his wedding. So when he walked in and he saw that somebody else was marrying the princess, he got very angry. That's my bride. She was promised to me. Well, the husband stood up and he said, you're the devil. She does not belong to you. And then he drew his sword and he chased the devil back to the well. And the devil jumped down into the well. And then the princess and her husband ordered the well to be covered up with stones and bricks and soil so that nothing would ever come out of that well ever again. Maybe the well is still there somewhere in a forgotten corner of a forgotten palace garden. Nobody knows. But I can tell you that the princesses and the king and the young man who became a prince all lived happily ever after. <laughs>